Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, a few weeks back, I made a video on how the cybersecurity industry is changing, you know, how in five years, we're going to see a lot of jobs go away and a lot of new jobs being created and which are the jobs you should focus on, which are the areas you should not focus on. And I got a lot of uh, like comments about that video. A lot of people were asking me a lot of questions, especially people who are newly entering cybersecurity, you know, students or professionals who are now transitioning into cybersecurity for the first time. So I wanted to make a follow-up video on this. And I specifically, I want to talk about how like almost 80% of the entry-level positions that we have now, they're going to go away as AI becomes more and more powerful. And very important, I want to say that these sort of videos that I make, this is not to like fear-mongering or like clickbait. I don't want to scare you and all that. But as cybersecurity professionals, especially people who are entering the industry for the first time, it is very, very important for you to know where the industry is going, where the shift is happening and not wait around when the shift has already happened and then you're trying to play catch up, right? So while you keep on doing the stuff that you are doing, doing certifications, applying for jobs, getting experience, it's very, very important for you to know fundamentally how the industry is changing and how it will impact you as a cybersecurity analyst. So that is the whole uh, point of today's video. So let's get started. If you're new to the channel, my name is Tamarush Lal. I'm a senior security consultant at AWS and I made this channel to give advice on cloud security, AI and cybersecurity career. So please do like and subscribe to this channel and let's get started. Okay, so yeah, this is what I'm talking about, guys. This is I'm, how AI is going to replace 80% of cybersecurity analyst work and what to do about it. So like I said, this is not like uh, just to like make you feel worried and feel that your job is going to go away. No, I mean, there are so many potential new opportunities which are coming out, which I'm going to talk about, right? That's the whole point of this article. But right now, there are two trends which are changing and going to have a massive change within cybersecurity. And one is vibe coding and the other is agentic AI. And a lot of people do talk to me about these two trends. And the mistake I usually see a lot of cybersecurity people make, they look at them as things that we have to secure. They they talk about, oh, vibe coding, these are bringing new security risks. And agentic AI, they are bringing new security risks. They're only looking at it from the lens of, like, these are risks I have to secure. And they are not looking at it from the lens of, these are things that are going to change how work is done and how it will impact me also. So that's the mind shift, mindset shift I need to think about. Do not just look at them as new risks. Look at them as ways in which work is going to change. So let's take a look at wipe coding. So first of all, if you're not familiar, wipe coding is basically you uh, the new types of tools which have come out, which essentially allow you to create code and complete applications just with a few prompts. And this has been like a massive, massive game changer. All the big companies, uh, Amazon, they just re released their own like IDE with vibe coding built in. We have things like cursor, uh, uh, cloud desktop, on and on. So many new types of uh, vibe coding software is coming. Just with a few prompts, you can create a complete application, right? And it's increasingly becoming the standard for development. Anybody can now become a coder. Anybody, your marketing guy, your finance guy, they have access to vibe coding environments. They can literally create an application from scratch. Okay, so it's fundamentally changing how software is being created. And you might be thinking, okay, so what does this have to do with me as a cybersecurity professional? I know it's going to bring in new types of risks and everything, but no, think about this, what vibe coding means for you. So tools like, you know, Cursor, Kiro, they, they don't just assist developers. They're not just assisting them, they're replacing a lot of the work which like these engineers used to do. They can scaffold projects, they can coordinate like multiple agents, refactor code bases, test features, deploy solutions, all from one prompt, okay? And what does this mean in cybersecurity? So what, let's assume that you are a cybersecurity analyst. Now people can create a complete automated phishing response workflow, right? What if you are in GRC? Somebody wants to create a complete, like a compliance ready secure cloud security dashboard and AI should be able to do it. Uh, you want a tool to classify data under GDPR or NIST to risk categories, no code requirement, you can have, have it done, right? So again, I want you to understand, you know, if your work is around Excel sheets or these sort of automations and all that, this is where vibe coding is going to change the game. What previously used to take five people will only take one guy who knows a little bit of prompt engineering and vibe coding and we'll, he will be able to develop these sort of softwares. So just think, uh, how will this change 
so how security work will be done. So instead of hiring cyber security engineers or analysts to write, you know, detection logic, build dashboards or script automations, companies will be able to prompt LLMs to do it for them. So like what? Uh, SOC, SOC playbooks and AI can generate a cloud compliance checks, AI coded threat simulation labs built from prompts. And if you're a security professional and you used to do like glue these sort of things using YAML, using Python, using JSON, you're going to see that your work will go away and be replaced by autonomous agents that can build, test and deploy these sort of pipelines, these sort of security integrations. So that's why it's so important for you to understand why coding is, is a massive, massive game changer because it literally allows people to build these sort of integrations, you know, things like playbooks, things like security automations, and it will become very, very easy. You will still need a person to do it, but the people uh, like the amount of people that you need, that, that will drastically go down. So why coding is not just something you have to secure. It is also something that you have to think about how it changes the way work is being done. And the second trend I want to talk about is, of course, agentic AI. Agentic AI is another major, major game shifter in how security work is being done, right? So if you look at this recent report by Accenture, like they did mention them that AI agents are expected to like the, the amount of revenue, like 450 billion and elevating operational efficiency, boosting business growth. And they did mention the type of work that currently is at most at risk, things like IT operations, things like uh, customer service work. And within IT operations, you can just think about security operations also. Right? Security engineer, if you're a guy just looking at dashboard, if you're just a guy building dashboards and integrations and do so that sort of work, it is at risk of being replaced by agentic AI. Just recently, literally when I was making this video, OpenAI, OpenAI announced that their own chat GPT agent that can control a computer and do tasks for you. And of course, all of this is going to introduce new sort of security risks, but not just security risks. It will also replace the amount of work that is being done, right? And how agentic AI is evolving. So people, when they think about agentic AI, they used to think about like things being automated. Now we have things like the model context protocol. Right. Think of it if you're not familiar with MCP, it, think of it as uh, like a USB port, which allows your AI agent to talk to data sources, talk to tools, talk to the Internet. It is now able to connect and gain access to all sort of real world tools, real world data, which it did not have access to. I want you to think about supposing you have a maybe your security policy defined in Confluence. Using MCP, I can connect an AI agent to your Confluence page and tell it to generate software using Vibe coding, which follows all the security requirements. So you can imagine that's how the amount of work I, like, I can automate just using this. And this is how like MCP will look like. You know, you have these sort of agentic AI or maybe Vibe coding IDs. You have MCP protocol connecting to the servers. You have access to Google Drive, databases, GitHub, all sorts of these integrations are now possible using MCP for agentic AI. It gives it access to the whole world and new sort of security risks are being introduced, but the way work is being done, that will also change. So think about this. What, what sort of work are you doing or what sort of work are you targeting? Are you a tier one SOC analyst? That is just triaging alerts, you know, following playbooks, tuning signatures, and when it's needed and escalating, you're creating tickets in Jira. Maybe you are a GRC professional. You're copying data into spreadsheets, performing checklist based audits, or maybe running awareness campaigns, or maybe you're an AppSec team or a vulnerability tester that scans servers or applications. You generate a PDF report and then email it to the IT team. You, again, you can imagine how easily this can get like replaced or like i mentioned before a security professional you're doing things like integrating system using yaml python those sort of things this side of routine based pattern work is exactly what it ai will replace you know agentic ai powered an mcp can now ingest it can gain access to context because of mcp it can interpret complex instructions and autonomously do multiple steps to complete these sort of security works so that's why these sort of these two trends are the ones which I really I feel that people do not understand just how much of a game changer vibe coding and agentic AI when it comes to security work. So this is like uh, what is going to lead to. So like I said, and I've talked about this before, this is going to lead to the security baseline moving. Now I've talked about here, I'm saying collapse, but when it's like collapse, the existing baseline will collapse and a new baseline is going to come. So a lot of the foundational tasks that junior analysts, compliance officers, cloud security engineers are used to do, and that is going to be replaced. It's going to get swallowed by AI. 
So what was considered to be, you know, normal work, looking at a dashboard, responding to an alert, is now easy for an agent to do. So what happens? Junior roles are going to go away and mid-level roles are going to get compressed and senior roles will become AI supervisors, people who can supervise a lot of AI. So what does that mean? So the SOC analyst of tomorrow, so think about what a SOC analyst does, right? It's not someone who reviews 100 alerts a day. This is your KPI for the day. It is someone who supervises like a fleet of autonomous agentic AI and triages those alerts while they the agents are focusing on alert handling, escalation policy, model drift. So we are talking about new types of roles, which is augmented by AI, you know, threat analyst, prompt engineer, orchestrating the workflows. And this means new skills will matter. Do you know how to give proper instructions to LLA agents, you know, prompt chaining, where you're building upon your previous prompts and you're designing the memory, reviewing AI generated work with a critical eye to see if any hallucinations are happening and building and maintaining secure agentic workflows. This is easily the most critical skill I see for cyber security professionals. So we are shifting from doing security work to designing how security work gets done. And this is also a massive, massive opportunity if you're not able to find a job or God forbid you feel that you've been laid off. Now one person can do the job of like 10. This means that people are going to start their own companies, right? You don't need to be part of some big consulting firm. With the right tools and prompts, you can do the work of a whole team. You can build a cloud security baseline for startups, launch an AI policy framework for SaaS companies, continuous threat monitoring by agents, you know. So if you think ever thought about, hey, I want to do my own stuff. I want to freelance or launch a consultancy. I want to become a virtual CISO. This is like a massive opportunity. Previously, we just used to have these big names, but now because of AI, you can start like uh, your own company just from one, like being a one person. And because of agentic AI and vibe coding, you can build your own SaaS solution. If you're not familiar, I just made a SaaS application in two weeks and I put it there. You can look at it in a description which analyzes your cybersecurity CV. So if you have, if you're hardworking, you have niche expertise and public credibility, and I'll talk about that, you will be very much in demand. So don't think about this as your job is going to go away. Think about it, what the new types of opportunities that are coming out and how to stay relevant. So, okay, now I've talked about all these things and I've mentioned this before in my previous videos, but let's touch upon it again. How do you stay relevant? Well, the first step is to reskill. If you don't have any of these things, if you don't know about AI security and Gini MSUs, things like the model context protocol, secure LLM application design, or maybe governance frameworks like the NIST AI risk management framework. Guys, you need to upskill fast. I have, I have recently launched two new courses on agentic AI and vibe coding security. I'll, I'll put them in the comments also, and I'll give you a discounted link. Check that out if you want to upskill in those areas. If not, there are a million videos available on YouTube. You know, you're not bound by just what, what I have made. And reposition. So do not think about job titles. Think about what your skill is and how you can show that value to companies. You know, maybe I have such companies secure LLM APIs in 30 days without slowing down dev teams. I've, I think I've given this example before. Why? Because that's a profile. It's not just your job title, right? A job title can be replaced, but your skills, they remain with you always and rebuild your workflows. If you're already in a job, think about if you're using a SOC script, how can you move that to an AI agent? If you're doing risk assessments, how do you automate that using LLM prompt pipelines? If you're make building client reports, how can you move towards auto summarizing them? So, and lastly, reach out, build your own brand. You can write on LinkedIn or Medium. You can teach on using things like YouTube, Udemy, Skillshare. You can publish, publish books, you know, share your insights because your brand is going to be very, very visible. And so very, very, sorry, valuable in the coming area as it will give you a credibility. So if you don't have, if you have expertise, but nobody knows who you are, it's not gonna help you much, right? So these are the things you should do while, while you keep on doing your certifications and all that, I want you to focus on these four things to make yourself like truly future proof for the upcoming industry, which is coming out. Certifications are not enough. Just sitting by and thinking, oh, these are like risks which I need to focus on and I'll worry about them when they come. No guys, please do not, the ground is like this is shifting underneath our feet and it's very, very important for you to focus on these things before they come and impact your job. So I hope this was useful to you. Uh, like, like I said, the whole point of this is not to fear monger, not to make you scared, but to show you 
how the industry is changing and also to show you the amazing opportunities that are there. You can become like a very, very well-paid AI security orchestrator or an AI augmented security lead in the coming future. You can start your own multi-million dollar company using Vibe Coding and Agentic AI. So all these opportunities are present, but it's up to you how you take them. So I hope this was useful. Please do like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.